the fucking, you know, neighborhood affiliation is is kind of offline to me when you a motherfucker in the field of entertainment and shit and you not about that life. Now, I don't know what phase I claim. He claimed, you know, he from Emerald Hill Bloods. You know, I don't have no problem with, with, with the blood homies, the Pyrus. Uh, I know a lot of homies, Bloods and Pyrus, I fuck with. Shout out to my nigga Mitchy. Shout out to Game. Uh, uh, shout out my nigga Wack. Uh, shout out to motherfucking Quick. Uh, second to none. A lot of niggas I've dealt with on a, on a just a cool tip. So, no disrespect to the Bloods or the Pyrus. You know, he said some shit that I didn't think was, uh, was, was authentic. We addressed it. Uh, it was supposed to win on my nigga chill had a few words whatever so I get up a couple of days ago and uh, it's some post about uh, Faison to put up saying that basically he heard through the grapevine that a nigga still been talking about the Dave E shit which the shit the situation was done my nigga Faison hit me up in my DM, slid me his number, said he had respect, he was banging honcho, music to drive by was shit. So I thought the shit was over. Uh, apparently, he heard through the grapevine, not from me, but he heard through the grapevine that 8 was still talking. So he decided to address a situation about uh, my people's Nate, uh, Nate, Nate Hill, and a project I had did, what, back in 95. Uh, so let me take you back a little bit. Uh, back in the 95, 96, 94 era, after the success of Menace to Society, I got offered a, a, a starring role in a movie called Reasons. Now, you ain't never heard about Reasons because Reasons never came out, uh, but uh, it starred myself, uh, rest in peace Bernie Mac, uh, Lisa Ray was in it, uh, it was directed by Monty Ross, one of Spike Lee's peoples, uh, so... It was a it was a legit project. I was in Chicago maybe four months. Um, you know, they was cool people. You know, I met them. Uh, I don't know how, but uh, the hookup was done by my attorney at the time. You know, shit. They came to L.A. said, you know, they wanted me to be in a movie, all that. So it was business. You know, it wasn't no wasn't no wasn't no work. What no? What? Let me tell you. The first thing, I didn't know what the fuck you know my nigga Nate was into. You know, whatever. That's that's here or there. But on some business shit, me getting my bread in the music field and and acting and all that. Hell yeah, niggas offered me a hundred grand. So flew to New York, did the movie. Everything was cool. You know. Um, right after we got through filming. The movie gets seized by the feds. Now, quote, right a couple of months before, like I said, my attorney introduced me to my peoples from Chi-Town. Everything was good. Anybody know me? I, uh, my, my relationship with Chi-Town is very extensive. It was like a second home to me around then. You know, I was in Chicago maybe every other fucking weekend doing concerts for Shorty G and the GDs. And Larry Hoover used to call my crib. Everything was straight with the Chi-Town people. My Chi-Town people. All love. Every day. Uh, so... My man, my, my attorney, you know, knowing what my peoples was into, my attorney, you know, got to rub his shoulders with the niggas real good. You get me? Like, he was in in. You get me? So, uh, some shit happened where shit hit the fan and everybody finna get served grand jury federal subpoenas. So, my attorney warned me what was finna go down and indicated that they knew about the payment and that when they got ready to subpoena me to come to the grand jury I better speak up on getting paid for the movie because they already knew I had to bring it. So I get subpoenaed you know, I had to get my own attorney because fucking with my man was conflict of interest. So I get my own attorney, my own attorney too. He, you know, when he's got the paperwork, whatever, they knew about the hundred grand. So basically that's what they asked me. Now, niggas talking about I got on the stand and testified. 
Never walked into a courtroom. Never got in the witness, the little box, or, you know, people, whatever. Never got that. I was subpoenaed for a grand jury, but I never saw a courtroom. They asked me, did I act in this movie? Yep. They asked me, did you get paid a hundred grand? Yep. They asked me, do you usually make money like that? Cash, so to speak. You get me? I said, yeah, definitely. I go on tour every fucking month and I can pull in cash. You know, that's how we get paid. You know, I don't know how other niggas get paid, but I take my bread up front. I mean, I take my bread cash. Fuck that. So that was it. No, no, no tales from the hood, so to speak. No, whatever. So, in this transition, niggas is trying to say that that's snitching because I should have took another route. Again, federal grand jury subpoena. I'm MC8. Movies, records, you know. Fuck the gang shit because what I represent as, as, as that got nothing to do with a motherfucker when they know you got a hundred grand in your pocket and you got a federal subpoena. So they didn't ask me shit else. There was nothing to tell. You can't really tell on motherfuckers when you don't know shit, you know? So I got my man phase on and then my man, uh, some cat Jojo Capone out of shy town who has this book or whatever they trying to do, whatever. But that's where all the shit stemmed from. Uh, no federal paperwork, no no federal court shit, no paperwork, no, no, if people know my name, no quote said anything uh, to, uh, that was involved with the case that they were trying. They asked me, did I get paid for doing a movie? Yep, that was it. So, let's move on. So, my man, my man uh, still hits me up. You know, get on the Gangster Chronicles podcast, you know, worked it out. So I'm new host of the Gangster Chronicles podcast. Shout out to my man Steele. Shout out to my man James. My man Brian behind the camera. Um, start getting a lot of hate. Because, you know, people used to seeing who they see on the Gangster Chronicles. You know, Reggie, whatever, the other cat, you know, so... It's been, it's been a lot of animosity that the show is going in a different transition. We got picked up by uh, Black Effect. Shout out Charlemagne. Uh, shout out iHeart. So, again, let me remind you that this so-called snitch shit is stemming from 1995. My man Nate wasn't no punk. Like, Escobar status. So, I'm still around here. Like, I've never heard of anything, no bullshit, whatever. So, let's get back to the podcast. Um, we get picked up. My man JoJo Capone hits my man still about two, three weeks ago because, you know, they, whatever, and they had a discussion about, you know, Gangster Chronicles. And it was mentioned that, you know, I'm on the show and it probably wouldn't, you know, I don't know if my man was trying to get on the show as a host or he was trying to get the connection or whatever. But when that happened, my man hits my, my, my man hits still back up on some, you know, check this out. Your man a snitch. He told Wookie Wump. Trying to put it in the perspective as if a nigga was like wearing a wiretap or some shit and bought like kilos from somebody and fucking set them up. How? I ain't know what, nigga ain't know shit about what my nigga was doing. You get me? I was there to do a movie, period. Um, but that's the jacket they trying to put out there is that, you know, a nigga shouldn't have said that I got the hundred grand to do the movie. I'm a businessman. That's what I got paid for. I didn't get paid for nothing else. I got paid to do a movie. Just like today a nigga paid me to do a verse or whatever. So, and then what's crazy about it is this so-called telling never mentioned a Nathan Hill name or whatever. Never mentioned it. So, that's the jacket they putting out there. Come to find out, you know, I don't know none of these cats. 
I don't know Faison from a can of paint. I don't know Jojo Capone. So why a nigga try to discredit a nigga on some snitch shit and talk all that crazy shit? To me, what is it for clout? You know, for not being able to fuck with the podcast show. You know, we're picked up over here now, whatever. But the funny shit is, is you have a lot of beefs with motherfuckers that you don't even recognize. You get me? And you get a lot of that when you in that motherfucking limelight sometime. And anybody who know me know. I'm the last nigga who want to be in the motherfucking limelight. I'm the motherfucking back shadow nigga. You get me? I'm not the limelight nigga. So... For a nigga to try to do that shit is funny. Not that, you know, whatever. Because real niggas who know me know what it is. Real niggas who know I fuck with. Been to shot town. Niggas in the hood. Whatever. Niggas know, like, that's one thing you can't say about eight. Eight ain't never told on a nigga for shit. For what? Nigga, whatever you do is your business. Nigga, that's it. As long as I get my paper, I'm good. So, I'm just here to clarify up this misconception of of eight being a snitch, like I told on a nigga had work and pointed a nigga finger out and yeah, you see the nigga in the courtroom and that's him and blah, blah. Hell fucking no. Nah. So I don't do no snitching. My snitching, snitching, my snitching uh, fucking, I want to say my my snitching uh, 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 statement or status from where I come from is when niggas do dirt together and the other nigga rat on the other nigga. You know, me and you went to go dump on the enemy. We get pulled over. They find the strap. They take me to the back room and I say, yeah, he pulled the trigger. He dumped five times. We went this way, this way, and this way. Or, yeah, we got to work together and nigga, we got busted and this who go, this who sold us to work. You get me? I, I, I don't know what the, the, the snitching jacket is by saying a nigga paid me to act in a movie and never named that nigga who really, you know, so, man, you know, you find that shit nowadays. Like I said, it's a lot of motherfuckers out here that just want to discredit you, and I don't understand what the story is, but that's what it is. 